Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, today I have this uh, PlayStation 3 controller. It's a DualShock 3. Um, so it's got the motion sensing plus uh, vibration. Um, I got this controller off eBay uh, for parts. Um, it was very dirty and I cleaned it up. So it looks nice, but um, it's got an issue where if you put any kind of like pressure on it, it starts sending random inputs and um, probably really hard to see, but the charging port is damaged. Um, so there's like, there's a piece of plastic in there that's been broken off and then the um, connector itself was opened up so then that it wouldn't stay firmly attached, but I bent it back um, but it's still a little flaky because it'll tip back and forth. So I'm going to replace that port and then that should give us a working controller. And then I have another controller that um, the joystick is broken. So I'm going to be replacing that. So um, let's open this one up. Um, the random button input I looked online, that's a common issue. There's like a ribbon ca cable that's tensioned with a piece of foam and that gets old and then it'll lose connection and, and do that. So we're just going to put a piece of tape around it, which gives it more pressure and should stop that. So let's uh, open this up and take a look at it. So these are pretty simple to get into. There's five screws. They're, they're all the same length, so let's just pull it out. Okay, so when opening this up, um, there's this piece of plastic here that it catches on these, so I like to open it um, so the bottom opens up first. So let's try to get that open. A little clip, I think, that kind of hangs up down here, though. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll open it this way first. Just try to put some pressure on that joist. So um, this one luckily came past there, but this one's gonna get sort of caught up. So if you tip it forward a little bit and then comes around, um, so that takes that piece off. Um, so the, these are just clipped on and they come off and on pretty easily. And then they just slide, this whole mechanism slides on here. So when we start taking the pump part more, it'll um, probably fall apart, but easy to put together. Um, there's just one screw to get the motherboard out, and then we can lift that and we can get to this charging port, and I can show you where the, the ribbon cable's under here. So let's just do that. This is the same as all the others. So. All right, so for this, it's kind of hard to get this cable out, so I try to leave it. Um, so this you can push kind of down on the, down on the uh, controller ports to give it some more pressure to come out. We're not going to take it out much further because you have to unclip these and this and we don't really need to do that. So here's the ribbon cable here um, that connects to the motherboard like uh, the buttons and apparently this 
piece of foam behind this ribbon cable um, deteriorates with age and doesn't provide enough pressure. So you just um, you have to pull that out and just put a piece of tape to give it a little bit more um, width, I guess. So um, let's do that right now. So I'm all out of electrical tape, so I'm just gonna use this tape. It's not as thick, so I'll give it a couple passes here. So let's get this out. All right, so here's the foam. It looks like it gets dented in on the plastic casing and then it loses the thickness, so let's just so I'm just gonna put this on here uh, and try not to compress the foam and just give it some more width and structure. So that should probably do it. Okay, yeah, that's definitely firmer, so one last thing is we're gonna put a little deoxid on here. And a little bit on the pads too. No oxidation really. Okay. So with this next part, I'm gonna desolder this connector. As you can see, <laughs> I accidentally powered it off on, so uh, I'm just gonna pull the power out. It's easy to do once it's unscrewed, but it's really hard to do if it's still screwed into the controller. It's still kind of difficult. There we go. All right, so that's that. All right, so what I want to do is look at this connector. I have this case of new connectors, um, but there's many styles, so I want to match the style on this to these. So if we look on the bottom, So you can see on the bottom, there's just those two points. Or maybe not even any points. So I think that's just plastic tabs that go into it. So that matches this one or this one. That's a different They're similar, so let's see. If we look at the top here. That one looks similar. This looks shorter. That one's shorter. Um, let's see. This one. And then. I think this is it. Um, there's this one, but the prongs are different.
So this is the one. Um, the features that match well are these feet. So those have like that little dent in them and they're flat. And then it's got the two plastic prongs that go through the board, which you can see on here. There's those two holes, so that's the plastic. And you can see the, the feet have those dents on them. And then the prongs are flush with the board. Same with this replacement one. So that looks like a winner. Um, it's gonna be some fine soldering for those. So I might break it, but hopefully not. Um, if not, I have another one with the broken analog stick. Um, that I can make one good working one. But uh, let's just try to be careful. So the thing I'm really worried about is there are two small components really close to those um, connectors there. So we'll see, we'll see what I can do. If I can zoom maybe. Hopefully see what I'm doing back. Okay. First things first, let's uh, get a little new solder onto the old solder. Really not sure how I'm gonna do with the, the connectors, but let's, uh, let's try it. Right, so. so I added some solder to the four pads there, so now I'm gonna try to absorb that solder with the solder braid. really hard to show. Um, I'm just going to use a screwdriver to pry this up a little. pressure with the screwdriver and then try to heat up these pads. Let's see if we can get it to move it. Oops, not that. Okay. Nothing moving there, so I'm gonna add a little um, flux that helps helps to transfer the heat. 
also makes it look like a mess sometimes. Alright, looks like I got some flux on there. Let's try heating it up again. Nothing moved there, so let's move to the other side. Add some flux right away. So I got up, I definitely absorbed what I put down, but I feel like the existing solder is still there pretty good. So let's try to add some more solder and try again. One thing in my research of how to solder it, the fumes are pretty bad for you because um, you can get unleaded solder for the new stuff, but the old stuff might be leaded and you'll vaporize the lead and breathe it in. And that's like the fastest way for it to get into your system. And so I try not to breathe when I'm soldering and then if it's smoking or whatever, I just blow the smoke away. I hope it dissipates, but I really should get, if I do this a lot more, get something that uh, filters that smoke. All right, so just added more solder and we're gonna try wicking it up again. So hopefully that reactivated some of the original solder. I put a lot more this time, hopefully that'll help. Trying to get a good angle here. There we go. This stuff's pretty nice, like um, there's some copper braided wire in it. Just pulls in all the solder. I think it, it also has some flux in it. Well, that's why I didn't flux it originally. not disconnected or anything. All right, let's get these guys up. Here. 
<clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna try to grab onto this with the pliers and then put some put some torque on it and hopefully it'll move. to do left in it. So I'm just pushing down. There we go. Okay. Oop, there we go. Got it. All right. gonna clean that up and get some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, so there's a lot of flux residue, so I'm just using this to clean it up. So let's just triple check. So here's the original, and then this is the replacement. Oops. for the replacement. Here's the original. Only thing I don't like is those pads look shorter. But those line up. The pads are concerning. Let me try it on the board. So far in, I won't be able to solder them. Let me see if there's any others. Um, a bit longer pads. Oh yeah, but the pad isn't flush. this but it's yeah those are short too and this is the closest match just well this one has longer pads but it's um shorter just shorter in general yeah it's too short yeah so this one has to do we'll just have to try to get the iron in there Alright, let's try it. So, I don't know if it was clear, but see, there's a lot more pad on the old one versus the new one. But other than that, it looks like it'll work. But you see how the old ones all spread apart, and then that plastic actually still works, but it's just not very secure.
Alright, let's uh, try to get this guy on. thing people were saying online is um, like these side pads aren't electrical or mechanical for giving it stability when you plug and unplug um, they were saying lead solder is structurally stronger all right so I soldered that piece in but it's kind of Making sure the pins are lined up. My pins are perfect, so I'm gonna try to reach in there and reactivate the solder, and hopefully that'll work. Okay. There's like a resistor like right there. It's really stressful. Oops, I bridged, I bridged too well. Let's try to get a little wick in there and try to get... Okay. Alright, good. Okay, so that's good. That was the hardest part. The two components look good. I'm just gonna... I feel like it's not 100% straight though. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to shift it a little bit. Okay. That's better. Okay. That's good. We got the two plastic posts in there. All right. Um, before I solder more, let's check conductivity. It'll be easier if I use the USB cable. <clears throat> All right. So. All right. That's nice. Nice and snug. Alright, so I got my meter set to continuity. So this will just, this will just beep when uh, there's a connection between two points. So we touch together. Alright, so what I'm going to do is try to get one of these on, one of these USB prongs. So I got this on the first one. And I'm going to touch these pads there, so. so that's good. So that one's connected. The middle one. Side one. Oh, that's ground. I don't think I'm touching ground. All right, let's try to let's try to do it at the connector. It's just hard to get the 
Let's see. All right, so this first one. That's good. Second one. That's good. Third one. Good. Fourth one. Fifth one. So making sure to test it on the board, not on the. Perfect. All right. So I tested it on the board, not on the prongs themselves, because if there wasn't connectivity, then um, it wouldn't beep. All right, so like that. All right, so I'm just gonna put solder on the other two pads, or three pads. So let's, I'm gonna heat it up first and hope it gets a little Cause there's some solder underneath the pad so that'll give it a little bit of pressure there or i mean support there okay and then switch over here solder than was on there but I'm hoping that gives it some structure anyway all right let's I'll show you the work here so there's quite a bit of solder on there but there I made sure to hold it there so like the bottom pads would hopefully get some connection but you can see lots of plastic there versus what we had before and it's all janky well loved I guess but now I can continue its long life all right and then I can show you and here we've got this piece of foam it's probably hard to see um, only thing that's concerning is it's I'm hoping that there's enough pressure that it doesn't disappear on me but um, it's a little thicker so it doesn't fit snugly in this spot. So I'm a little worried about that. Let's cut. So I'm just gonna cut the sides open, I guess. Here's my diligent as I should have been, but hopefully that's still enough thickness. This goes here. So that just provides tension to keep this ribbon cable pressed up against these connectors. It's trying to run away on me. Alright, so let's try get this in here. Good is it? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, that was my only concern that those would interfere. I think it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good because look at it, it's like really pushed against that plastic. So, all right, so we'll just screw that in, put the cover on, and give it a test here.
really wish there was more pressure at this corner. Just hope it's good enough. Now well, the piece is still in place there. So. Let me see the design here. So that goes there. Yeah, there's probably enough pressure between this and the battery, which I almost forgot, that it compresses that pretty good, I think. Alright. Alright, there's a lot of goo there. Let's just clean that up, not that it's doing anything. Yeah. yeah, I should have filmed cleaning this. I just wasn't feeling like that that day. Um, definitely had had uh, stuff had spilled on it and had crusty in the corners and some kind of blue paint transfer, maybe from this the other controller because the other controller is blue. So when you put it back together, you just make sure you get these these to pop through. And then you fit it around the battery. This one's getting stuck funny there. On the battery. Our port looks great. Yeah, we'll just screw in these five screws. So when I clean this, I use magic eraser to get scuffs and stuff off, but it it really like dulls the finish. So um, I think this plastic is pretty soft that they use. Um, but good sign is uh, it's powered up. Um, so I'll just test that. Um, but I'll let's do the other controller and we can test both at the same time. So we we'll set this one aside. Okay, so I just wanted to show that we can connect up this controller we just fixed to the PlayStation 3 and it'll actually work. So, I just get the USB cable. All right, so here's the USB cable. I don't, <laughs> I'm doing this with one hand, so this might be rough. Put that in there. Definitely a tight squeeze now. All right, so it lit up, so that means it's charging. So let's um, push the button. You can see charging lights, so that's a good sign. So I think we did it. Um, another thing that I'm gonna, I ordered is the um, HDMI, uh, yeah. The other thing I ordered is that there's an HDMI port issue on the PlayStation 3s where um, the wires get loose um, and this has it. So if I move it, so I can get both. So it's, if it's to the side slightly, I get a picture, but if it gets bumped, it cuts right out. 
and that's a common problem again with the PlayStation 3. So I've ordered a new HDMI port, so we're going to be putting that in here to get this going also. So, oh, one more follow-up. Um, what was happening before is if there's any, uh, this is going to be hard to show with one hand, if there's any kind of tension, um, any kind of twisting, it would send random inputs. Uh, that's why we put that tape on there. Um, I don't know how to demonstrate it, but yeah, like if I had done something like that before, um, this would have just kind of like moved things around and clicked on things. It's not doing that at all now. So this is 100% again, which is nice because I, I like the, the white, so um, it was pretty grimy when I got it, and now it's nice and works perfectly. And I saved money on it.